So I'm just, this is Jamie Landau facilitating our teaching face to face with a mask on and creating caring classrooms. We have 10 minutes until the official webinar is going to begin, but we have a bunch of people who have got here early, which is wonderful. And so I already have an activity for us to begin that will be late related to this um, webinar. And so for anyone who now has come in, Brian, Jan, Jennifer, Patty, um, um, if you can, if, if you're able with your technology, um, please answer this prompt in the chat, which is which numbered emoji do you feel like and identify with right now? Um, and if you've never used Blackboard Collaborate Ultra before, you're going to learn some cool tricks today. So please click the little blue, uh, or sorry, purple tab at the bottom and then click the little chat bubble and then chat with us with everyone um, by sharing which um, which emoji you feel like right now. You can see that Yakov and Sharon and I already started us, us off. So Jan, I'm calling on you. Go ahead and how are you feeling? Go ahead and put them in the chat. Annoyed, sad, goofy. <laughs> yep. Sorry, Brian. I think I think because maybe you're just calling in, you're not going to be able to participate in this part of it. But I appreciate you chatting with us. So so why don't you, Brian, just tell us in your chat how are you feeling? The prompt that I have in front of us is: um, Are you feeling happy? Are you feeling embarrassed? Scared? Nervous? Surprised? Quiet? Cool? Sad? Excited? Bored? Sick? Frustrated, angry, funny, proud, and we clearly can have a lot of feelings um, right now. Someone already said that they're feeling happy, and another person already put um, that they're feeling quiet. <laughs> so Brian, Jan, Jennifer, and Patty. Ah, <laughs> Jan now uh, wrote, um, uh, oh, Jennifer wrote overwhelmed. Yep. Yep. Jen, Jen, let's see which one annoyed. Is that annoyed Jan number eight? Yep. Yes. Patty, you have a question. Um, my, it won't let me chat. Okay. Are you, what are you seeing? Did you see the, the collaborate panel? I, the I chat button and I see the participants and all of that and then I can see what everybody says but I can't um, hmm. it doesn't you open up a chat box for me all the way at the bottom there isn't a little bar a little thing that says say something yeah and yeah. it doesn't do anything when I mm. when you type in it it, it, it doesn't open anything up oh. when you type in that thing that says say something there's nothing that says say something it's just a little conversation bubble mm -hmm. <laughs> well you'll probably want to look into what version of collaborate or are you calling in on your phone or oh, I'm in my office oh, okay have you used collaborate I've not, before? I've not had any trouble with this before oh okay okay well, we'll just we'll just do the best we can today. I'm glad you can at least see the PowerPoint and talk because there will be a lot of talking. I won't just have us doing chat. So don't worry about that. So why don't you here? I'll type for you. I'll be your transcriber. So Patty feels which one do you identify with? Well, I was happy, but now I'm frustrated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll put happy and frustrated. The latter with tech. Yeah, Jan, Jan, uh, Jan, annoyed with the summer semester or you mean the upcoming semester? And you can go ahead and unmute yourself if you want to talk, Jan. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, yay, Patty, it's working. Yay. Okay, so, so Patty, now you, and if you really want to try putting an emoji, Patty, I don't know if you see the little like, emoji icon on the right where it says say something but you can click on that and there should be a bunch of emojis you could pick if you find one that like on the chart in front of us represents how you're feeling a 
Oh, good. Looks like Shay is joining us. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi, Shay. Hello. So we're uh, we're hanging tight until we officially start. I have already started we're, um, recording and we're, we're beginning kind of the intro activity here which if you see in front of us, I'm asking how you're feeling, right? Which of these emojis do you identify with right now? And and everyone is putting in the chat, they're responding to that with um, a number of the emoji that's in front of them or a word like that under the emoji that describes how they're feeling or some of them have figured out even how to use the emoji in the chat. So if you could go ahead and let us know how you're feeling in the chat. Will do. And Sophie, same with you just arriving. Please go ahead and um, jump into the chat and let us know how you're feeling. And I do see Brian, you said tentatively reserved. Yes, that's okay. You're right. There should be a see the pictures we're looking at. There isn't a reserved picture. So uh, we need an emoji for that. <laughs> Cautious. Cautiousness. Um, a caution, I'm sure, is a lot of what we're feeling. And please, if if you want to add more feelings, if you want now after sitting here for a couple minutes, you're feeling differently. <laughs> kind of like Patty said, at one minute she felt happy and then the next minute frustrated. <laughs> so Shay, we don't see one from you yet. It's coming. I'm having technical difficulties. Oh, okay. Hey Jason, welcome. So we have about 11 people near, here who have already arrived, which is great. And I've just been telling everyone that we've already begun a little bit of an activity while we wait till everyone gets here where I'm asking everyone to share in the chat how they're feeling, right? Do you identify with any of these emojis? Um, if so, put the number in the chat. You can describe the feeling. You can add the picture like Shay. Shay, it looks like you're almost like a cool with a little bit of some sarcasm. I don't know. You have the upward, uh, the upward um, smirk there. <laughs> How would you describe that feeling, Shay? <laughs> you can tell us orally if you want. <laughs> Oh, you tried to send the cool emoji. Got it, got it. So Jason, yeah, everyone, come on, join the chat. Jason and Linda and Gopi, we've begun uh, with our interaction uh, almost to start the webinar. Um, please, um, the question is, how are you feeling? Which numbered emoji do you feel like and identify with right now? And so please click on the purple collaborate panel tab and jump into the everyone chat and uh, tell us how you're feeling with a number for the emoji um, or if you can find the actual emoji, but that's why I have numbers there to describe them. So you could just put number 10, for instance, if you're feeling sad. So Linda, Gopi, Jason, I'm having a hard time. I hit return in the chat and it's not sending anything. Oh, so when you type in the say something, it won't it won't um pop up? Mm -hmm. Nothing to type won't return. Can't send it. Mm. Well, okay, well we'll maybe we'll I see can maybe type it. I just can't actually 
hit the enter. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm glad you can at least read the chat and still talk with us because then you'll be able to engage. Sophie, awesome. You're happy. Melanie, hi, Melanie. So, Melanie, we are answering how we're feeling. And I know you said your camera and things didn't work, but I have up on my slide, I hope you can see it, um, pictures of different emojis and numbers and asking people to share in the chat like you just did, Melanie. Um, but how are you feeling? Are you feeling happy, scared, nervous, overwhelmed, annoyed, sick, tired, angry? Um, and so if your chat is working, if you can go ahead and answer that in the chat, Melanie, and go be, um, it looks, looks like Ilke and Cardis and Don, welcome. If you could also please um, join us in the chat and share um, share how you're feeling. Yep, you need to be in the everyone chat. You need to be in the chat with everyone. Thank you, Patty, for giving some more instructions. Ah, Goopy's, Gopi's feeling cool like Shay, so we have some cool cats in the room. <laughs> Melanie is, wow, very happy. Three happy emojis. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Um, Ruth, Ruth, you just joined us. Um, uh, oh, Jason, tired. I feel ya. I feel ya. I uh, probably like a lot of you. I'm not sleeping very well, right? And then that just makes everything else harder. Um, so, yeah, tired, tired. So you would be that number 11 emoji there with the little Zs on the top of his head. Um, yep. Don, Don, how are you feeling? Are you able to uh, get into the chat? Ruth is happy. Good. Jason. Oh, you're also, oh, good. You figured out the actual emoji, Jason. Awesome. Great. We've got a bunch of happy people here. So, Jan, guess what? Maybe some of the happy vibes. Right? They say that like we can share our emotions, um, so maybe some will feed you the happiness to, to lift you up a bit as we start this semester, um, uh, which is actually going to relate to some of what we're going to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. I want to make sure that everyone's trying to or at least somewhat can engage with the chat and uh, audio and visual. We are going to be doing a lot of interaction through the webinar. We'll do the best we can. Um, but uh, what's cool about these different webinars, if you've started taking a couple of them from us, is we're while we're teaching you about a certain topic, we're also trying to teach you how to use the tools. So even though today's topic is not about Blackboard Collaborate, I'm going to be using Blackboard Collaborate in a lot of ways so that it may give you some good teaching ideas or make you feel more comfortable with this tool, um, even though it may have nothing to do with mask wearing. <laughs> so, okay, Don is happy too. Oh, good. So we got we got a bunch of happy people. Um, I should play the, um, what's that, uh, what was that song from a couple of years ago about happy? Anybody remember that? Um, anyway, it was a really great song, so maybe I should have played that at the beginning of our training. Um, welcome to the party, Don. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Brian. And I love it, you guys. Brian is going to do this training fully through chat with us. So I, I really appreciate everyone's, uh, you know, adaptability and flexibility. So I'm actually going to go ahead and get started um, because we're right at one o'clock and we've got a lot to do in the next hour. And um, there's a reason I started with this activity. And, um, and I, I do want to say, first of all, when when you're not speaking, if you can just make sure to mute your mic. Um, but it, so far, you guys are doing a great job with that, especially if you know we have dogs or kids that run into our rooms. But um, there's that little mic, Ravone, you can see in the middle bottom of your screen. So you can also raise your hand at some point. Um, but we'll do a lot of interactions. But I, so far, the sound sounds really great. But I just wanted to mention that while I'm talking or someone else is talking, uh, we'll be able to keep our mics muted. So there's a reason I started the webinar on teaching face-to-face -face with a mask on and creating caring classrooms with this uh, emoji activity. Because it's actually a teaching strategy. Right. I mean, I know it was a little goofy and kind of fun, but also hopefully that's the best kind of te teaching. Right. That's fun. But this is actually called a temperature check. 
that you can do with your students at, at the start of your face-to-face -face class or even midpoint of a face-to-face -face class to have students communicate with you non-verbally while they're wearing masks. Okay, so we did it here digitally over Blackboard, but you could do the same thing by putting up these pictures of these emojis on the screen in your face class or even just asking them just like we did um, to share how they're feeling non-verbally, right? They don't, they can just look at the picture and give a number or, or use a picture rather than the words. And um, so we're going to talk today a lot about nonverbal communication and emotions and, and things like that. And so this is an example of starting to begin to create a caring classroom by attending to human emotions that will be heightened during this pandemic. Right. We saw that even in our chat bubble here and Dan, you know, really shared. Right. Our students, just like us, are going to feel overwhelmed. They're going to feel sad. They're going to be sick. Right. Number 14 emoji, unfortunately, is is us. Right. Wearing masks. They are going to feel awkward. They're going to feel nervous. Right. It, it, this is weird. The classroom is going to be quiet and it's going to feel weird. And we're going to talk about that today in this training. Um, and so it's really important that um, you do teaching strategies like this that attend to your students' emotions. Um, and so consider adjusting your teaching with this temperature check. So not a real temperature check, right? That's, that's not something in our return to campus plan, right? But an emotional temperature check. And you can use emojis to have your students non-verbally share how they're feeling even while they have their masks on. And then consider adjusting your teaching according to how they're feeling. That is the beginning of starting to create a caring classroom, right? By meeting their emotional needs, not just their need for information or logic. And, you know, we'll definitely find this within the first weeks of the semester or during any other kind of spikes in cases and things like that. So I wanted to begin today with how you might do this in your classroom, how you might use a temperature check as a pedagogical strategy to uh, create a caring classroom. And so what else are we going to uh, do today? Well, by the end of this webinar, you're going to experience simulations of nonverbal communication and emoting. And already, you just experienced one, the notion of a temperature check with emojis. Um, but you'll, you'll experience more. Um, you are going to hopefully by the end of this understand, some of may have you already, the notion of care ethics and how it applies to teaching and learning with masks on. You will also identify strategies for humanizing a face-to-face -face class while masking. So we will get down to very like logistical uh, strategies for speaking with a mask and how to make your classroom comfortable and effective with mask wearing. Um, and then ultimately, by the end of this uh, webinar, all of you are going to start to create an inclusive, caring class constitution. Um, so we have already started accomplishing the first learning outcome, what we just did with emojis. And now I want to move to more nonverbal communication strategies for humanizing a face-to-face -face class while emoting. And I'm going to now take away, and this is very intentional in my slideshow, and I'm going to ask that all of you turn on your videos, if you can, if you're okay with that. If there's a reason you don't want your videos on, then, um, then uh, you know, I understand that. But right now, when I'm teaching about how to humanize a course, it's really important that we see each other's faces um, and, and videos. So that's, we're going to talk a lot about that. So if you can please turn on your videos and, um, and um, you will also, at points now, as I go through the next part of the webinar, need to be speaking. And so you're going to need to kind of unmute yourself as well. So thank you. Thank you for turning on your videos. So here's the thing. When we wear a mask, we lose our facial expressions. It's kind of like having the video off, right? People will feel very distant from each other. Um, and so research in my field of communication and psychology shows that the face is key to communicating emotions and expressing humanness. So when we don't see each other's faces, right? When I just saw a bunch of bubbles on the, the screen, I didn't see your, your faces. You guys felt less human to me, right? 
this this room felt a lot more distant and sterile and, and awkward. Um, and that's going to happen when we're wearing masks, right? Um, we're going to seem less human and our, our students will feel less human to us. And the emotions will be hard to communicate with each other, right? It feels more neutral when you're looking at a blank screen, for instance, or someone with a mask on. So the other thing about masks is that when you're wearing them, your voice and the voice of your students will be stifled, right? Or strained as you try to overcome that. And some of you may have already experienced this this summer. Um, so we've got to, in this webinar, figure out how to overcome these obstacles, this obstacle of facelessness and this obstacle of um, uh, voice, voicelessness or, or stifled voices. So the next activity we're going to do is going to call attention to what researchers and I call the teaching body by emphasizing nonverbal communication and visual strategies for communicating and humanizing your face-to-face -face class while masking. So we're going to go in and talk to you about how to use hand gestures, even sign language, change the tone of your voice and the inflection of your voice behind a mask, and even how do you visual images in class uh, while you're teaching with a, a mask on. And so guess how we're going to begin this activity. We are going to begin with a game of charades. And that's why I needed to see your videos, um, because I'm going to need one of you to volunteer. Uh, so we'll see. And the volunteer is going to need to have a mask near you. So if you have a mask somewhere near you, um, that's we're going to need your help. And let me first explain what we're going to do, and, um, and then we'll begin. So we're going to do one round of charades. And I don't know how many of you have ever played charades or if you remember charades. But if you remember in charades, one person has to act out a word or phrase without speaking while other people guess what it is. Um, and guess what? We're going to make it even harder today because we're going to add another challenge. That person is going to be wearing a mask, right? Usually in charades, you don't wear a mask. Um, so what I'm going to need is a volunteer from you. And what I will do is whoever volunteers, I'm going to then send in a private chat, chat, mess, chat message to you. I'm going to send you a popular phrase that teachers and students and all of us have often said in class. All of you have said this word before. Sorry, it's a word, not a phrase. And I'm going to tell that person, and they're going to act it out for us on the screen. And so that person's going to need, um, your, your mic may need to be unmuted at this point because we need to make sure you get on our screen. And the way the screens work is they pick up who's speaking, like the sound. So even though the person doing the charades won't be um, talking to us, um, we need to make sure we see you, right, to act you out. So, um, so do I have a volunteer? Anyone want to be our brave charades person? I don't, I didn't, oh, who is, is that, um, is that Yoka raising your hand? Yes? Okay, unmute yourself, Yoka. Yeah, yeah. it's me. Wonderful. Okay, so, because you and I don't think we've ever met in person. So, you've got a mask near you. You have I do. a mask. Perfect. Okay, let me go back to my chat. And I am going to send you, now I got to figure out, okay, hold on. Oh. Yeah, I, I've done this before, why am I not figuring out? I need to send you this, oh, here we go, okay. I'm going to send you, hmm, I may have to do this through email because, of course, Usually you can do, oh wait, hold on. Hmm. So find someone. Yeah, you go at the top on chat and it says find someone to chat with. Oh, I'm spelling your name wrong, Yolkoff, that's why. Thank you, Lynn, because I was spelling his name right, wrong, so. Okay, so Yolkoff, I just sent you the word. No one else can see it, okay? Only you, I sent it to you. And now, and yeah, so Melanie, you're just going to have to hang tight. Um, sorry about this, because we can't describe, well, I guess we could describe what he's doing. But what's going to happen is, Yolkoff, you're now going to act this out with your mask on and try to, for us, for three minutes, and I'm going to time um, everyone else who can speak, so y'all, you guys can um, guess, is going to try to guess what it is, okay? 
So if you can see Yokoff, great. Um, but if not, that's okay. So Yokoff, just um, uh, click, the, click their hand or something because we need to be able to see you but without you talking and the video goes away when you don't talk. Yep. Like click. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, like, sorry. You're going to have to somehow yeah. make noise with your hands because of the video. I'm sorry about that. That's a technological issue with this. Uh, okay. okay. So so I, should, I, should, I, should make, I should make noises once in a while, right? Yeah, like grunt. Make like a grunt, but we'll just, yeah, we'll just know that's not part of the what we're trying to guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, okay. So, yeah. so you may need to lift your hands up and act this out. So go ahead and go ahead and start. Okay, so I'm starting. If oh, you guys sorry. have guesses, you can put it in the chat. Maybe that. Okay. So Ooh, okay, need... someone said house. And oh, Yoka, give us a thumbs up if they're getting close. So they said house. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay, you guys keep guessing. Guess in the chat. Ooh, okay, Jason put classroom. Someone, Dan said stay at home sick. No, no. Building a house. No. Nope. Remember, you guys, it has something to do with teaching and students. Have you guys ever played charades? He's saying one word. You guys ever done that before? <laughs> saying first part of the word. That's what he's telling you. <laughs> Ooh, Shay said office. Close. Close. Office hours. I'm sort of being a little bit of your interpreter for you guys, but... Cool. Okay, so go back. People thought home and office. <laughs> first word, first part of the word is, oh, uh, <laughs> point. <laughs> nope. Corner. Nope. Home, yes, home, yes, Jason. Yep, ding, 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 okay. So first part of the word is home. Second part of the word. Ding, ding, ding. Jason got it. Or who was Jason and Patty? Okay, okay, perfect. Great, great. So we'll stop that for a second. So you can mask off now. Okay, you guys. Guess what? You did that in two minutes and 23 seconds. Um, That's because my uh, viewers are very intelligent, so it's, <laughs> it's not bad. Right, they always it's say, there. how many PhDs can you put in a room then, right? <laughs> so. Exactly. So, you know, you guys, that was fun. You did a good job. I honestly didn't think you'd get it in three minutes, <laughs> so I'm... But why do, you, why do you think we did that activity? And please just, you know, unmute yourself right now and answer. Why did we do that activity? So, to show up, just to show how to how we can communicate without uh, without facial expressions. Ooh! So Yorkov said, "Look, we actually in two and a half minutes were able to get homework in nonverbals." Melanie says to illustrate body language. Yeah. What What else though? Was it seamless? Was it, you know, was two and a half minutes maybe a long time to say the word homework? It is. It is right. So that activity also showed how we struggle in our classrooms to communicate. Not both the 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 good ways we can non verbally communicate, but also the challenges. Uh, but we remember it always was. Yes, no, exactly, Patty. It always was, definitely. Um, so, you know, I, you know, I did this activity intentionally with you because I wanted, like Yolkov said, for you to embody what it might be like teaching in a face-to-face -face class with a mask on. 
But guess what? This was even harder because you're you will be able to use your voice. And, uh, you know, we're going to learn strategies today that are going to help you. So in many ways, charades is the extreme. So I also wanted us to show from this activity that you guys can do this, right? That you can build your confidence to overcome these obstacles by using hand and body gestures and leveraging your voice. But it requires, like Yolkov did and all of you did, an awareness of our body, right? And, and as Patty said, we always had to do this, but now it's gonna be more important even to call attention to our bodies and use our bodies. So what better, who better then to teach us how to communicate with our bodies and our voice than guess what, our colleagues in the theater and dance department. So I actually asked them to create two brief videos for my training today that we're going to watch um, on how to use your voice and inflection and pitch while wearing a mask. And then uh, our acting professor is going to teach us about that. And then the other video is going to be like Yokov, how to use our nonverbals, right, our hand gestures, even some sign language um, to communicate with students. And so um, I hope as many of you as possible will be able to see these videos. I'm going to share them in one second. Um, so bear with them. The first video is about five minutes and the second video is about two minutes. And so if you can't see them, at least listen to what they're saying, although that'll be hard with the nonverbal gesture one. And then um, take some notes too, because we're gonna, this will come full circle for us in this webinar. So here we go. So. Oops, that's not the one I want. It was this one. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and start it. Everybody, my name is Ian Anderson. I'm an assistant professor of acting and voice here at BSU. So it stopped working for you guys. If you can, by the way, if that happens again, let me know with your voice on the speaker because I wasn't able to see the, um, the chat message. So I'm gonna go back and give this another try. What I might have to do is put it in the chat for us to watch that way if this doesn't work again. So I'm gonna give it one more try. Please let me know with your speaker if, um, if it doesn't work. Um, did you guys see the video start? Yes. Okay. 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 So, okay. It, Dan, don't worry. I'm, I'm following the instructions, but yeah, let me give it one more try and then, yep. Okay. Okay. Um, hold on one second. Okay. Amy, can you see my comments in the right hand side? I've got yeah. a, a, a red, looks like a red circle with a slash through it beside my name. Everybody, my name yeah. is Ian Anderson. Yes. I'm an assistant professor of acting and voice here at BSU. Jamie had reached out to me. Okay, did you guys just hear that? I can hear it, but I can't see it. You still yeah, hear it? I heard it, and I can see the YouTube video, but then stopped at three seconds. It looks okay, like she need to hit the play, play icon again. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to problem solve this real quick. And I'm just going to put the links in the chat. I'm going to have all of you guys watch on your individual devices rather than me share um, because the sharing feature is clearly not working right now. So if all of you can now take about eight minutes and watch those videos um, and then take some good notes and you may have to kind of mute yourself while we uh, go ahead. So go ahead and do that for about eight minutes and then we'll come back. Oh, you'll need to mute your mic because we can hear everyone. Yeah, thanks. For how 
how we communicate with our students while wearing a mask. So I broke it down to
So I know some of you may be just wrapping up that last part of Melissa's videos, and I will have links to these videos at the end of the PowerPoint slide, and you'll be able to um, download this slideshow later. Um, but briefly, before I move into the next um, slide about different communication strategies, we've talked about emotions, how to non-verbally communicate emotions with emojis, and now you learn from Melissa and Ian how to communicate with your body and with your voice. So I'd love for a couple of you right now either to share verbally through the video or on chat what was one new strategy that you learned from them that you might try. Just right there, what was one takeaway that you had from, um, from those videos? I think using the pitch, I, I never thought about it before. Mm. Okay, so even the attention to your voice, yeah. Okay, ooh, uh, Brian said connecting with elongated vowels, right? To emphasize your points behind your mask, yeah. The volume. Volume, who was it that just said volume? Your brother. Don, it's Don. Don, yes, right, but but interesting, right, Ian said, but we have to be careful because we can't suddenly shout, right, for a whole day or for a whole week or a whole month, you're going to end up going hoarse. So it's it's careful attention, like Don, like Don right, to volume. Um, and getting it from your, he says, your diaphragm, right, from your, your, your not just this upper part of you. I know for any of you who learned how to sing, that's what they would always teach you about singing, right? Don't sing from your head, from your, your diaphragm. Yeah, projecting your voice, not from your throat. Exactly, Melanie. Um, Jan, you said pace. So maybe, you know, I tend to be a fast talker. So when I watch in videos, it reminded me I need to slow down. But not too slow, right? But slow down when I'm speaking behind a mask. What about from Melissa's video? What were some takeaways from hers? Yeah, yeah, a lot of us are fast talkers, that's true. But what about what about Melissa's with the, the arms and the hands and the sign language? She was actually showing you certain sign language. Any particular gesture she made? Oh, I'm sorry, you didn't get all the way through, but was there one that you saw that she gave? Anyone? Well, to listen, yes, Jennifer Sin. Yes, look at me gesture, good. Gopi, turn on your video. Can you do it for us right now? <laughs> no? Okay, well, a number of you said thumbs up. Do you guys remember when Yokoff did his charades, how often he used thumbs up, right, to communicate? So, so those are just some things to start to think about. Um, and I'm going to now show you how, in addition to emotions and um, voice and um, exactly large lecture class, definitely, and um, your, your hand gestures, I'm going to now also talk to you about um, visual communication, and that's actually my area of expertise. My One of my backgrounds is in visual rhetoric, and so let me go ahead into this slide. And so y'all should see a slide that says visual communication strategies for humanization. And um, these are a couple different ways in which you could leverage the visual in your class. So I'm going to talk briefly, very briefly about these. But the first one is kind of funny. It's this um, notion, if any of you know Tyra Banks or have heard of her, she's a, a um, super and she has coined this phrase called smize. And what she means by that is this notion of smiling with your eyes. And she's, you know, she's a supermodel, so she's made millions of dollars off of using her eyes, right, to emote and to express. And so I took a, this, this picture off the Internet and then added masks to it to kind of show again that even though we'll have our masks on and that will shield and cover a lot of our face, we still have the use of our eyes. Um, and, and I actually tried to do that. If you look at the pictures of me over here on the right, that picture of me wearing that mask, I took that several times trying different eye expressions. 
and I tried to, I wasn't really trying to smile, but I tried to change my eye expression to make it look a little softer and less scary. Like, I don't know if you've seen some people with their pictures with their masks on, they look, their eyes are really like this, right? And that's, that's not going to be the, again, that's not going to create us a caring classroom. Um, so think about how you might use your eyes. You might smize with your eyes. Um, the other strategy here is pictures of the instructor and students without masks on. So I would encourage you to display on the screen in your first day of class, or maybe in Blaze View, a picture of you without your mask on. Because I don't know if you guys have realized this yet, but it's very likely our students will rarely see us without a mask on, right? They will only see that right side of me, see the right picture. And again, we want them to know we're fully human and look at Jamie behind this mask. So on the first day of class, show them a picture of you without your mask on. Um, yeah, exactly. Go be a welcome video. So that's actually you, you. That's what I have in my notes that this is actually a best practice in online teaching to humanize an online course. That's why they encourage faculty who teach fully online to have a welcome video, like Gopi was saying. And that welcome video often includes a picture of the faculty member or a video with them. So similarly, that's a strategy what I'm saying you could use for your class, which is just like a best practice in online teaching. We are going to now have to work harder to humanize our face-to-face -face class. And I do know we have online pictures. Um, and that's like in our directory, but put it up in your classroom is what I'm saying. Uh, Brian, I think it's great. It's at the end of your email, but put it up in your classroom too, right? Because you're going to be standing there in front of them with a mask on. And so it's a strategy to humanize the actual face-to-face -face, um, experience. Um, and then there on the bottom, I kind of made this like a circle because I thought all of these are sort of a holistic human. But um, think of the, the branding and the aesthetic of the mask that you wear. So we all are getting the VSU mask. Uh, by no means do you have to use that one. I have a bunch of different masks. If you look at my picture here, so I'm, I'm showing you guys and I'm going to talk about these today. Um, but think a little strategically like a communicator about your images, right? Um, there's a multi-million dollar advertising and branding industry based on colors and aesthetics clothing, right? So we, you can't deny that the, our personalities um, and can be persuasive. So think about how you can leverage that to make a caring classroom. So if you want to have sort of class, you know, VSU spirit in your classroom, then maybe wearing the VSU logo brand uh, mask is a good idea. Um, if you have a more white kind of medicalized mask, which you're going to see I have right here, you know, it's important. We're going to want to pick the best mask that, that fits us. And I'll talk about that later. But, you know, this is this is going to make me look like a nurse. This is going to make me look like a doctor. And so the classroom is going to feel more medicalized. It's going to feel more like a doctor's office because of a white mask or or even more likely something like this. So that's going to fundamentally change our classrooms. And so we want to consciously think, how can we overcome that? How can we humanize our mask wearing? Maybe by wearing ones with logos or colors or just more white rather than looking like a doctor's mask. Um, so again, we've gone over emoting strategies. Um, we've gone over um, bodily um, hand gestures and speaking strategies with wearing masks. And now we've gone over visual communication strategies for um, mask wearing. And I said, multi-million dollar industries are into figuring out nonverbal communication and branding and images. So these things are proven to work if we strategically leverage them. Um, but you're probably saying to yourself, OK, but how else do I create a caring classroom? Um, and I, I want to draw on this concept of care ethics. And any of you who are in the field of philosophy, politics, or feminism, you may know about this. So this is going to be just a brief kind of philosophical, theoretical moment. But um, Carol Gilligan was a feminist psychologist in the 80s. And she theorized this concept of care ethics, which is uh, not necessarily a fundamentally new philosophy, 
but um, some of you will see it resonate with maybe some of your beliefs. But it ultimately ended up being applied to psychology, healthcare, politics, and education. And the idea behind it is that um, caring and relationships are fundamentally to what makes a moral or person or our identity. That our identity is fundamentally in relation to others, right? This is in contrast to sort of the Western Enlightenment view of the individual self, right? This is this is anti-Descartes, <laughs> you know, this is, Descartes was, I think, therefore I am, right? He was the classic, I am my own being, right? Care ethics is pulling us in a completely new direction, getting us to think, no, my being is fundamentally in relation to others. And so when you start shifting that perspective, you also start to realize that your needs are tied up in other people. Um, and your goal then as a human should be to meet needs of others because fundamentally meeting their needs is yours. You're a symbiotic kind of in relationship. And similarly, care ethics has this belief system that our emotional needs need to come first, even more than rational or um, the, the centering of primacy and logic. So the attention to our emotion needs, our empathy, compassion, and relationships, listening, paying attention. Um, and ultimately, care ethics says, you know, we, we arguably naturally have an ethic of care with our families, not always, but we do, but that actually we, to be the best person, we should even have this around people who are not of our family, who are even strangers, especially if there's a potential to grow that relationship. And that's what a teacher is, right? Our students, we don't want them. I hope you don't want them to be strangers. You, you want to treat them like family or at least in a relationship with you as the teacher and student. So Caratex argues that ultimately caring is the appropriate way um, to appeal to people. And I know that's very philosophical and big picture, and so I wanted to draw on that idea to think again, how can we create a caring classroom? Um, what happens if we take ethics and we add teaching face-to-face -face with a mass, and then we add this strategy from inclusive pedagogy called creating a caring class constitution? And so this is where we get to the practical of how can we take care ethics and apply it to our classroom. Um, and this is uh, this idea of a class constitution is out of inclusive pedagogy. Um, it um, involves voices in co-creating with their professor and peers a shared vision for the class semester. It gives students responsibility and choice in their behavior and learning. And it sets guidelines and expectations, but in a way that's not a top-down determined solely by the professor. It's proactive, collaborative, relational, and attentive to emotion rather than reactive and punishing, the last two of which could lead to interpersonal conflict or violence. So aligning with an ethic of care, both the professor and the students share in the responsibility for learning and caring for the well-being of others their selves then can see in relation to each other making decisions about the classroom. So again, some of you might be like, where is she going with this? What we're now going to do is we are going to now start to create a caring class constitution, just like I'm going to men you would do the first week of your class. Again, this is to help create a, a relation of um, positive and well-being within you and your students, right? This is this is where we might talk about USG's policy on face coverings or VSU's policy on, on how they're going to discipline students and employees who don't wear masks, which I will link to in the um, chat in a bit. But, but our students are going to more likely buy into that if we start from a collaborative model creating a caring classroom. So Again, this calls for us to first envision with and in relation to our students what a caring class would look like to co-create a caring class constitution. And I've done this before, and you'll see the example here on the left with my students in my class this last spring. I wasn't framing it around caring, but we were framing it around an engaged class discussion, or an engaged classroom. So what happens, I'm going to tell you guys how, how you would do this, and then we're going to kind of like do it here as a group. But basically, on the first day of class, you would ask students to share what 
a caring, engaged classroom looks like to them? <laughs> you know, literally ask that question. What does it look like to you? Have you been in a caring classroom before? Um, uh, not knowing it, you know, as you're in other places? And if so, what were the behaviors of your students then? Um, what did the professor do? What, ask them to envision what a professor does who cares. And as you ask them those questions, write on the board what they say. Write on the board the characteristics and the behaviors and the actions they say make up a caring classroom. And the students will say a lot of what's already on my example here on the left, right? But, but even by adding the word caring, that's where y'all could start talking about mask wearing and how masks are here to care for the well-being in relation with others, right? And that class, if someone shows up and forgets to wear a mask, we're going to dismiss class for the day and we'll all then do a lesson online instead, which is allowed in the, the VSU policy. Um, and that um, uh, those kinds of things. So this will be a jointly created kind of community constitution for how you're going to um, manage teaching and learning with masks on. Um, so here's what I want us to do right now is y'all with me start creating a caring classroom. So those of you who are able to use the whiteboard, look in the top of your screen, you're gonna see a little T. You see a little T that says text. Click on that and then you have a color choice and then go ahead and click on this little kind of um, off tan whiteboard I've created and go ahead and type in what you think makes a caring classroom. What, what does a professor do who cares uh, for their students? What do students do for each other who cares for their students? So all of you, please go ahead and start typing in this whiteboard. We are going to begin our caring class constitution. Awesome. So someone wrote relational responsibility. What does that look like? Whoever wrote that, like what add like, what does that look like? What does someone do with relational responsibility? Um, someone wrote a professor whose care for is cheerful and happy. Okay, so expressing positive emotions. A professor who's caring listens to students, takes the time to get to know their students. Yeah. What do students keep going, keep adding to our whiteboard here? What would students, when you see students in the classroom caring for each other, what do they do? How do they interact with each other? How do they, what do they do for each other outside of class? Yes, they check in with each other, right? They study with each other. They share notes. What else? Great, you guys are doing great. Um, keep going, right? What, what is the class as a whole? If a class is going to feel like in classroom, oh, we communicate as a team. So how do we do that? Do we, um, does that mean we, we listen, we, we read emails? <laughs> We don't sleep during class, right? What are, what are those? Um, give some more details. And by the way, what we're doing right now is exactly what you will do with your students. They will start putting stuff on the board, either digitally, if you want to do it digitally like this, or, or in person. And you need to keep fleshing out these actual characteristics, right? Um, so because they'll use generic words like, you know, we care about each other. And you want to say, well, what really does that look like? Kindness. Prompt feedback. That's great. Whoever wrote that in, yes, right? A caring professor gives prompt feedback. Um, ooh, okay, great. Someone started putting in social distancing. This is good. So what other ones could we put in our class constitution that have to do with mask wearing and social distancing? That's good. Yes, because you'll want to add that to your caring class constitution. Right? A caring class, good. A caring class thinks of mass as part of us and something safe, not a, not a, um, yeah, not a bad thing. Uh, good. A caring class during COVID will, 
we'll all clean up, we all sanitize and take care of cleaning the classroom. Good. I would add, you know, keep these are good. Keep going, you guys. A caring classroom. Um, you know, we all take responsibility. Someone wrote relational responsibility, but for if if someone forgets a mask, like we all take responsibility that now we're gonna learn online for the night. We're gonna have more homework that night rather than our face-to-face -face classroom, right? Yes, good. A caring classroom reminds each other. A caring class listens to each student. Good. Good. Um, so you can get really even give us more specifics here. Like a caring class um, um, shows up on time and um, lets their professor or peers know if they're sick. Right. So again, that's part of, you know, why we're doing this activity is I want I think the best way we're going to end up with a healthy classroom is if we're all buying in and creating this together, right? The Blazer Creed or the policy is not, in my opinion, going to make students buy into this. <laughs> you know, uh, lots of research shows, you know, having penalizing policies does not persuade people to be better people. <laughs> so how can we do that? Oh, I like that. Whoever wrote that on here. Offer an extra mask to a friend. That's great. That's a great idea. Right? So, yeah, if someone comes and they forget a mask, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to all leave and they get in trouble, right? It, it means, wait, maybe someone else has an extra one, and then we just want to make sure it's clean, right? Make sure it's been washed and, and all that kind of jazz. Um, a couple more. A couple more. You guys are doing great. A caring classroom and you can add to this too like we feel a lot on emotions and COVID and that stuff but you can add tell them to say describe like um, behaviors that you do to stay engaged and like succeed academically too so you can have a prompt for that and so you'll see on my class constitution on the left they talked a lot about like um, you know, doing homework, right, and getting homework on time. Um, oh, good. Oh, that's awesome. Someone wrote using Google Docs for collective class notes. Great. So note sharing with each other. Yes, that's great. So you can add what I would call general um, success, student success practices to your class constitution with your students. Ooh, Brian, I love that you brought up sleep. Yes, right. Um, and then, and, and actually, I would add sleep with um, giving ourselves grace for that because you might have students who, who you know, are struggling with sleep because of all the changes in their school and their stress. And so that might be a reason, you know, you're more flexible with your attendance policy um, because you recognize the importance of sleep. Definitely. Um, so I wanted to do this activity with you guys to show you what happens when you take care ethics. In the context of teaching face of mass and inclusive pedagogy, and then you use it as a strategy um, for your classroom. So this was already creating class constitutions was already in the literature, inclusive literature on doing the first week of class. And I think we can leverage it even more strategically here um, with regard to mask wearing. And again, that you would share the policy that VSU had mask wearing and discipline in action. Which you're going to get more from academic affairs, but. I wouldn't, you know, that is something separate. Like you can put that in your syllabus and hand it out separately um, because it relates to this. But in general, you won't need to get to that policy if if everyone's on board with this um, class constitution. So um, I have one more slide, which is um, my final four. Whoops, sorry, my final. Four four tips for teaching face-to-face -face with a mask on. And you know what's great is that a lot of you brought it up in the class constitution, which is you said share with um, like uh, the person who wrote, could you have one um, to share with a student? So guess what? The only way we can do that is we if we have extras or backups. So I'm sure many of you have already started realizing this, but now everywhere you go, you have like four different masks on you. I and so that's just a friendly reminder that I now have like three different masks in my work bag all the time. I have a stash of masks in my office drawer on campus. I have a stash of masks right here in my office at home. And I also have masks in my car. And 
uh, that's a tip for everyone, but especially because when you're going to be talking a lot in class and teaching, um, masks become a lot more ineffective when they get sweaty and dirty. The, the scientific research is showing that. So you need to have backup masks, even just because here in South Georgia and in our hot classrooms, um, you know, you're going to, they're going to get wet and dirty and you're going to need to replace them. So um, have masks, extra masks, backup masks everywhere is a re recommendation. Um, the second is, um, uh, uh, yes, Sophie, yes, that's a great comment. The second is finding the right fit and types of masks. So um, um, in addition to getting hot and sweaty, many of us have already probably experienced all these different fits and types of masks. And you even saw Ian kind of using a certain kind of mask. Find the ones that are right for you, but also the different classroom activities you're going to do. Think about this pedagogically. So I'm going to give you an example. Here's a mask that I found that has, if you can see, a lot of space for me to talk more. It's not as much on my mouth. This one I'm going to use in class on days when I'm talking more because it has more room for my breath to go because I've discovered when I talk for an hour with an ass like this, it gets really hot for me. So on the days when I'm lecturing more, I'm going to use this mask. Now here's the other idea. On a day when I'm going to teach outside or that's really hot and sweaty, I'm going to use this mask. Now I'm not expecting you all to go buy this one, but I'm a runner. I'm trying to be a runner during the pandemic, and these are meant for athletes, and you put them around your face like this, it goes around your neck, and they are sweat, they wick off the sweat. So I mentioned that because think about not only the right fit of your mask for you, but for the activity that you're gonna be doing with your students. Um, and, um, and Brian, I'll speak to that in a second, uh, if you can hold off that question first. Um, and then um, similarly, number three, practice wearing and talking with masks inside and outside. So right now, if you have not for an hour sat with a mask on and talked with somebody, do it because you're going to really realize how gross it is. <laughs> and you just got to start to adapt to that. And I would say sit outside on your porch sit outside for an hour and talk, like try all the different temperatures and places because that's what it's going to feel like in your classroom. It's going to feel icky and you want to try to at least somewhat adapt to that, right? We always kind of struggled with temperatures in classrooms. Um, so please just try it at home even before your first day. Um, and then, um, oh, I just lost. Oh, accessibility accommodations. Yes, Don, that's actually what I'm going to talk about right now. So, um, you may have students who are hard of hearing and they can uh, request an accommodation um, for masks that have um, clear clear space around the mouth, the mouth. You may have seen them. So it's like a mask like this, but then it's clear right here. And so the students can read your lips. Because think about it, our students who, or our colleagues and our loved ones who are hard of hearing are going to really struggle now with all of us wearing masks because they can't read our lips. It's one thing that they do to communicate. So you may have a student who requests that accommodation. And yes, Jan, the access office will provide them for you and your students. They are buying them right now. And they're actually even asking for our theater department to make some. So, but you would only get them um, if your student got that accommodation approved. Um, but you could also look online and buy one. Um, and as Don mentioned, you can buy yourself some clear masks online. Um, but um, just make sure they're still as effective as, you know, the best they can. Um, so, but think about kind of, again, the accessibility function of the masks that you're wearing. Um, just, I lost my notes for a second, so I'm making sure I all of them. And, um, uh, oh, that you'd have to purchase the clear mask. So, Jason, can you speak up? Did they say because your student requested the accommodation and they're saying you have to purchase it? Yeah. Uh, hmm. Currently, I have a student staff for hard of hearing attending one or more of your face to face courses. Okay, uh, so interesting. Face so, mask covering required post communication. Yeah, so, okay, so if I were you... I'm not sure if they're going to have enough, but then they certainly at least for us to buy them. 
Okay, so probably what's happening is they they don't they didn't buy enough. So what I so follow their instructions basically, and then I would keep your receipt, and then uh, it sounds like they'll probably reimburse you because this is a you know a, a um, ADA compliant you know. Well, there's company. already been several emails gone out about about are they as reliable? Uh, do they offer just much protection, and can people actually see with them? So people are already asking questions, and it's not been responded to. Um, From the access office. Uh, Laura Bears, Laura Bears, uh, she's okay. at the well, she, Yeah, she's your, she's your point of contact, so I would just keep staying in touch with her. I'm going to right now share in the chat, actually, our other great resource that will be in the end of my slides on um, um, communicating um, with clear mass and having deaf students that I did um, talk with Laura about, and she said this was a great resource, too. So, Jason, since you've already gotten contacted, that may be um, a resource you want to check out. Um, you know, give everyone great always a lot of adjustments everyone's going to do. I know that, um, you know, the access office wished that when the university purchased all these VSU logo masks, they had purchased some clear ones and they didn't. So it's, you know, they're trying to pick up kind of from other funding sources um, the purchase of these masks. Um, but I'm glad that you you had that experience to share. So, um, so I, I know we're at time, but I want to take the last five minutes here. Um, I'm going to remove my slide and now ask you guys to um, share your videos again. And for this last kind of couple minutes, I'd love you to share what was a light bulb moment from you today during the webinar or one strategy that you're going to use now to teach face to face with a mask on. And you can either share it in the chat um, or you can go ahead and share orally really with us. Um, and I will, um, uh, I'll speak to, um, Brian's question about the disciplinary action in a second, in a second, but please, what was one strategy that you, you learned from this webinar that you're going to teach face to face with a mask on? Practice talking inside and out with your mask on for a long period of time. <laughs> good. good. <laughs> Good. That's a great one. Yeah. Others. I want everyone. Everyone needs to share one, right? This is a teaching strategy we would do with our students. Everyone needs to reflect on what they learned, and right. What? Oh, using whiteboard for class participation. Okay. I'm glad you learned a, a blackboard collaborate strategy. That's good. <laughs> oh, uh. um, what about related to teaching face to face with a mask on, though? Everyone. What else? The important message that didn't come up to me so far is that I need a few extra masks. Oh, good. Extra masks, right? To have a stash for washing, for cleaning, for forgetting. Because guess what? If you forget one, you're not allowed on campus either. So, yep. Hand gestures. Okay. Patty said hand gestures, smizing, body gestures, sign language. Great. Pacing and diction, good. Someone said, oh, the uh, the temperature check at the beginning of class. Yeah, yeah. What else? What about the class constitution? Oh, seeing, um, seeing pictures. Yes, remember showing your picture of yourself without a mask on, just like a welcome video. Um, um, Kara? Hi. Yeah. Asking, asking students about their strategies for success, what works for them. Oh, good. So you kind of liked that idea from the class constitution. Good, Linda. Yeah. Anyone going to try the caring class constitution, right? To discuss the um, even because that might is going to be a much more proactive and collaborative way to discuss VSU's policy. It's so difficult to be a theater prof. Yes. Well, I encourage you guys. Um, so um, the last thing I, I'll share is um, modify version of class constitution. Cool. Yes, definitely. Please modify for however you see best. So um, I am going to share right now the links to the two policies that we have currently. One was the USG's policy, which you should now know pretty well from um, from the five million emails we've gotten about it, uh, which is, oh gosh, and look, my link is kind of not working there. Um, so, 
Let's try it again. For some reason, it doesn't like. Is that working at all when you guys click on it? Yep, yeah, okay, it's working. So if you go to that website and scroll down to the date in July when they announced the policy, you can see their official policy on mask coverings. Um, it's the same one that VSU has continued to share with us in email from, from HR. However, what many of you may not know yet is VSU is in the process of creating a policy on disciplinary action. So how do students um, get disciplined and related to it. I'm going to share the draft with you. And um, you, this is a draft, and it was shared with the deans and the department heads last week. So it is a draft. It has draft all over it. It is not to be shared more widely, but it is we were allowed to share it with faculty. Some departments have already started to share it with faculty. And so that they're going to, academic affairs will end up sharing this with all faculty once they finish it, I'm assuming probably by next week. Um, and I say this because these, there's a sample syllabus statement. Um, if you look at the last page of that disciplinary action policy, they have a sample syllabus statement um, that you could include in your syllabus. And yes, Brian, um, you are allowed to dismiss your class if someone does not um, show up wearing a mask. But what I would recommend is that if you've set a good caring class constitution, and use the strategies we all talked about, you may not even need to dismiss your class, right? Someone may have an extra, or the student may then take personal accountability, right? Again, it will be less, um, the whole point of caring ethics, right, is to not, to see us fundamentally in relation to each other and emotionally beings rather than violence and conflict. So I just, I wanna stress that if you just give them this policy, your students, it may make it more anti, uh, a conflict. <laughs> so I just, that's why I'm really approaching your classroom as a caring, care ethical classroom will help everyone hopefully agree to this for the right reasons rather than result in disciplinary action or even conflict or violence. Um, so, um, um, so yeah, Linda, you'll have to ask that question from academic affairs but I don't, that's not going to happen. There's, they're not going to have like, people policing doors and things like that. So, um, so yeah, technically, yes, they're supposed to be in the building with their masks, but we're going to have students just like I've already seen employees on campus walking through hallways without a mask on. Um, so, um, so I think the importance is to kind of focus on, again, um, our relationship to each other and our emotions and, and strategize that way. Um, um, but, but if you look at that disciplinary action, it says you're not responsible as a faculty member for, um, you know, monitoring the whole building. But those are good questions. So we're at 207. We've gone over a little bit, but I do want to open it up. If, if you need to jump out now, please um, do so. But I can stay on and answer any additional questions that you guys have. You've asked some great ones. I hope you um, learned a lot of new strategies. Um, I will be uploading the recording into Blazeview 101 along with the PowerPoint. And so you could go back and look at the, the references. I, I do have on my last slide, I didn't show you all of the links to all of these things. So not the draft policy for disciplinary action, but everything else. Um, you know, Ian and Melissa's web and, uh, videos, um, the deaf and hard of hearing website, so you, you could check those out. But I'd love to sit tight if anyone has additional questions. Good, lots of food for thought, yes. And, you know, I just really do want to circle back to the emotions, right? We're, you know, we, uh, we're all going to have a lot of mixed feelings about this and, and, you know, let's do the best we can with uh, the strategies that you can put in place. So, um, so great. Thank you guys. I'm glad you learned a lot. And um, I look forward to seeing you <laughs> with our masks on on campus um, and, uh, you know, go find some good masks. So bye everyone. Have a good day. <laughs> Jamie, I have technical question. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, I see only your video and.